hey hey beautiful women of launch to legacy hopefully i'm actually in the right page right now um i have been having of course some technical problems anyway we'll give it a whirl we'll see who jumps on uh and we will go from there so for anyone that i haven't met uh, my name is lou and uh, hey jess how are you um, hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you can't. Um, so my name is Lou. So I, I guess, um, power this amazing little group here or big group of amazing women that we've got uh, over the last, um, probably about the last six or so weeks or the last couple of months, you know, from January through to March, we've had a whole bunch of new members join. Um, and to each and every one of you that either jump on and watch this live or later, thank you so much. Welcome. Um, and I'm really just pretty pumped to have you in here um, to start collaborating and growing together um, and being able to share some more value uh, in the business world, whether you're wanting to start or grow your business or you're just thinking about turning your business uh, into, or sorry, turning a passion into a business to start making some money and, you know, either use that for holidays or, um, you know, shoes if you're into that or if you're looking to completely, um, you know, transition out of your full-time job. So I am going to get going. Um, again, you know, if you didn't see my post earlier, I moved this back to 6.30. Um, but basically because I had a couple of people message and asked me if it would be okay to push it back, hoping that they would be able to get on. Hopefully they will. I don't want to sit around waiting for them um, because obviously, you know, some people have planned to jump on this earlier. So if you had, I apologize if there's any inconvenience. If you're jumping on now, then amazing. Um, and moving forward, just to give um, a little bit of information. So these lives are going to be happening the first Tuesday of every month, 6 p.m. Australian Standard Time. So if there are any specific topics that anyone is wanting to hear about every single month, then please let me know, because what we're gonna be doing is that I will be hosting these with other amazing businesswomen, sharing some of their journey, sharing some of their lessons, um, and it won't always be coming from me. Absolutely happy to jump in here and do some lives whenever if people have got some questions. Um, but the purpose of these monthly events uh, is really to be able to, um, you know, not only, I guess, share some of my knowledge um, being a business coach, but also just hear from some other epic women because, oh my God, there are some amazing women out there who have turned passion into massive businesses and just being able to share some of um, you know their insight with all of you so that you're not always listening to me harp on. So Kelly, thanks so much for jumping on. Sorry, my phone keeps on moving, so we'll just keep on going. Anyway, what am I wanting to talk about tonight? So tonight we're going to be talking about boundaries in business and more specifically, time t-i-m-e so in case you haven't realized already and i'm pretty sure that you would have that we all actually get 24 hours in the day but whoever looks at someone else and thinks oh my goodness like how do they do so much with their time do they have more time or do they have more minutes or hours or seconds in their day than what I actually do? Uh, I can put my hand up. I look at people all the time and just think, oh my goodness, like what you get completed and the hours that you are a week is absolutely phenomenal. Now, if anyone in here doesn't know my story, a couple of years ago, I was not managing time to um, the best of my ability. I'm going to put my hand up right now and say that I am no God at this. Absolutely. There are still times where I will get back on to that burnout roundabout as I like to call it but I quickly get myself back off because I realize now like I've been part of that pattern and know my triggers enough to be able to put a stop to it um, and tonight I'm going to share with you some of my strategies that I actually have been able to implement some really strong boundaries to keep my time protected and to make sure that I'm giving the most value to myself to my clients um, to, to my friends, to, you know, potential partners, to my family, um, and all the things that actually matter to me, right? Like I, um, 
Yeah, and yes, absolutely, because we get on the roundabout and we don't know how to get off and we're getting tired and more and more and more and yet we think that we need to spend more time working or more time doing something else when in reality, when we're on that burnout roundabout, we actually need to be doing less and we need to work out how to put some awesome boundaries in place and actually stick to them and sticking to them can often be the hardest part but I can tell you from a place of complete burnout, so my story is that I was literally working 24 hours a day. So I had a corporate career, I was working at least 80 hours in, I look at that now and go why? I was running someone else's business for them, again I look at that now and I go why? And I was trying to get a couple of businesses off the ground, so just giving all of me to everyone else and there was nothing left uh, for me and to the point that I actually left my corporate um, career to start a different business and um, and it was at that point in time the universe said to me, you ain't going anywhere, honey. You're actually burnt out and you're exhausted. And, um, and I had some very big life lessons that came to me through that, which of course life lessons are awesome because you get to learn how not to continue living. Um, but you know, I guess you have to pick yourself back up and keep on moving, right? And you have to learn those lessons. Otherwise, you just keep repeating those patterns. So when it comes to burnout, uh, I believe I, you know, I know that there are a lot of people that can talk about some of these stories, but I 100% know where people are at when they're feeling exhausted and they're losing time for them and you know their their family and their relationships and their business is suffering yet they think they need to keep pouring more time into that to be able to improve them and tonight I really just want to talk about some of my strategies in terms of how I turned that around um, to now living what like, most of the time like at least 80% of the time a really balanced life in terms of how I spend my time and who gets what and what time I put back into my world because honey I am the most important, just like you are the most important, and yes, absolutely, because if you don't have time for you, you haven't got enough time for anyone else, and that is one of the biggest lessons I've learned over the last couple of years. So, first and foremost, so I started to recognize, right, that I didn't have a lot of time, and I was saying yes to everyone else other than myself, and I look back on that, and I've actually learned that there is a word called no, and if anyone hasn't heard it before, I'm going to tell it to you right now, and it's spelled N-O, and believe it or not, that's a full sentence. So, Lou, can you do this? No. <laughs> Lou, can you do that? No. <laughs> Lou, can you do this? No. And if, when I didn't have the, the, the strength to say no, I learned this word maybe, and it's kind of as good as no, right? Like, Lou, will you do this? Yeah, maybe. I had no intention. I just didn't know how to say no yet. <laughs> and then be like, can you do this? Yeah, maybe. And I said, maybe enough that people just got the picture that I was just not going to do it. And if they came back, I'd be like, oh, no, no, I'm not. Because I was able to actually sit there and decide whether I wanted to do it or not. So I implemented the word maybe into my vocabulary. And now I have the word no into my vocabulary. But what was actually happening, right? So how did all this start? So I was sitting there and I was just pouring more and more and more time into other business opportunities, whether that be my corporate career or other people's businesses or trying to get them off the ground. Now, I was also training twice a day at the gym. If anyone knows me outside of this group, you know that I absolutely am super passionate about my health and I love training. Uh, and for some crazy reason, I decided that going twice a day was going to be really good. Um, because to me, I thought that was pouring back into me, but it wasn't, it was just more pouring energy out. Um, and, you know, and people would come to me and they would be kind of like, right, can you do this? And I'd be like, I literally don't have any time. Like, I'm literally working, or what feel I actually was, like 24 hours a day. I remember the one, and I was actually proud of it. Like, isn't that the weirdest fucking thing you've ever heard? Um, you know, I remember when I had to get up and go to Brisbane for a meeting, um, the next day and I was working and it got to about four o'clock in the morning or three o'clock or something and I think I had to get up at maybe five or something to go catch my flight and I thought you know what why go to bed when I'll just keep on working and I was just constantly like buzzing I was wired and I wasn't drinking coffee at that time because the um, I guess you know the adrenaline or whatever like I was just burning myself through the ground like rapidly um, so nuts right so then what did I do? So I went, right, how do I not return to this place? 
And um, this is a strategy that someone actually gave to me. So they were like, well, how do you spend your time? Like, where are you actually spending it? And I was like, I actually have no idea. I guess know that I don't have any time in my life other than working and I don't have any boundaries around what, you know, or who I'm working for and what and what times I have available, etc. So what I did from there is that I created a spreadsheet. So from Monday through to Sunday, and it starts at about 5 o'clock roughly in the morning, and it finishes at about, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 o'clock at night. And, um, and I put it into like 15-minute increments. So what I did every single night before I went to bed, which God knows whatever time it was, I would sit there and I would update what I did that day specifically. So I'd get super anal about it. So I'd be like, right, okay, I got up at 5.30. And then I got ready and then I walked to the gym. At 6 o'clock, I was at the gym until 7. Then I walked back home. I only lived like a two-minute walk from the gym. Uh, and then I got ready for work and then I got on the tram or the train at this point in time. And then there was travel involved. And then I was here between these times. And then I traveled back and then I ate and whatever. I got super specific and anal about what I was doing for seven days. Right. So from Monday through to Sunday, I made sure that there was sleeping, eating, like to the best of my ability. It wasn't like, um, you know, I was snoring between this hour and that hour or whatever. Um, but, you know, like I didn't put my bathroom breaks in there or anything. I was just like, I'm at work. Um, so, you know, so from work between now, like this time and this time. But I tried to just be like quite general in my specific specificity if that's the word um and going right okay so then what it happened was right so I did that for seven days so it was like you know if you've ever done a diet it's like you track your food but I was tracking my time because I knew that I didn't have a lot of time but I knew that I had to find the time that I was using in order to decide how I was spending it and if it was actually serving me or not so if you're sitting there right now and you are watching this uh, either live or in the recording and you're going, you know what, I feel burnt out all the time or I'm exhausted or I'm constantly busy, I challenge you to actually do this for seven days and see how busy you are and how you're spending your time. Because one, you're either going to recognize that you have a lot more time than you actually thought you did. Or secondly, you're going to realize that you are spending a lot of time giving it away to everyone else and you don't have an abundance of it, right? Because you're just giving it away. And then you need to start making some very interesting choices after that, whether there are some things in your life that serve you and some things that don't, some things you maybe need to cut down or some things that you increase. But over that seven days of time, it's just like a game. So it's either like you're tracking food or you're tracking money, like a budget. I see time just like money, um, which may seem a little weird, right? But to me, it's like I count every single second. It's got a value to me. I value time. I love time because believe it or not, one day we're not going to have any. One day we're actually going to wake up and there's going to be no more time. So I value time just like money and I track it. And I like to know how I spend my time and where it's going. And for any of my clients that watch this, you will all know, um, you know, when we have our appointments or our coaching sessions, I'm always on the dot. Like it's just right. I'm always there because I value my time and I value my client's time. And I very rarely will ever be late. If I'm ever late for something, there's something in my external, like, you know, something else is going on. But I value it so much, just like I do money. So I love to be able, and specifically for that exercise, I loved to be able to actually track that time for a whole week to be able to see how I was spending it. Now, when I got to the end of that week, it gave me a really awesome clarity, I guess, around how I was spending my time at the time bank, right? Or at the time store. Because what I did is I then went and got like some highlighters and I don't have any sitting next to me right now, but I got some highlighters and I put them into, I guess, categories. So I went, right, a green color for work. And I highlighted how I was spending all of my times at work and I was able to see the pattern. Or if I'm at the gym, like a different color. And I basically broke it down into like my work, my health, um, you know, um, what else did I have in there? Work, health. I had like my other business opportunities. 
uh, you know, just general stuff like sleeping or whatever. But I basically was able to break that down and put it into categories for myself. So I could visually, because I'm a super visual person, I could see how I was spending the biggest chunks of my time and whether I liked that or not. So when I saw, like, let's say my work, let's say it was taking up, you know, there was just highlighted green everywhere, then that visually showed me that something needed to change in that point, or at least it showed me why I was feeling like I had no time for anyone else or why I was super exhausted all the time. And then I was able to go, Louise, you were starting work at 6.30 in the morning and you were not finishing until midnight or whatever hours it was, and it was a massive reality check for myself, right? Because that's not realistic it is not a long-term path right i am not going to be able to over a long period of time continue to work if this is what i was doing from six until midnight however many hours of the day that is because naturally of course you're on the burnout roundabout i might as well have put a sticker across my head and just gone i'm about to crash and burn because i did because it was unsustainable and I'm a really big person on looking at making choices in my life, whether they are going to last me for the long term, because I was making choices that were short term and they were quick fixes. And I've learned through going to the time store to look at how, my, how I'm spending my time that over a long period of time, it was just unsustainable. So I was then able to start pulling back some of those hours and have more time for me. So it was like I was, you know, just, uh, you know, just recouping the hours that I had lost in my day. Um, oh, that doesn't help, does it? Helps if I don't drop my phone. So hopefully that makes sense. So if anyone has any questions about that, then please let me know. Now, I do have a tutorial that my clients have access to. Now, if you're wanting to watch this to see how specifically I do it and to create this yourself, then I'm happy to give that away for you. Only to this group. I don't like giving away all of the stuff that my amazing clients get, but this is a fairly generic tutorial. And, um, and obviously, you know, my clients get a whole bunch of other stuff too. So if you would like to see this, then make sure you comment down below and say I'd love the tutorial and I will then be able to message you privately and give you that link. Uh, so that was step number one, right? So I had to bring awareness to how I was spending my time at the time store. Now after that, I rejuggled it. I went, okay, so I need to shrink some of the time that I'm spending over here and then that will grow over here. So I need to shrink some of the hours that I'm working and I need to actually sleep. Like that was a really big priority for me. And then it was like I wasn't seeing friends or family. Like that was non-existent. You can ask them. They may even jump on here because I know that they're part of this group. So then when I shrunk down some of my working, I then went, right, where do I want to, what do I want to add here? I went, right, one day a week um, or, you know, two times a month, I need to be able to see my family. So then I made time for that. And it was on the weekends because who would have thought that that would be a good time to not be working? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Um, or, you know, like maybe Mondays or if I get RDOs, like it depends what your personal situation is, right? And what it is that you're actually spending your time on. But you're able to recognize that there is often big chunks of things that we are doing that we don't need to be spending so much time in. Um, and we can shrink them and then we can grow in other places. So I started to reshuffle how I wanted to spend my time. It was basically just like an investment, right? So it's like if I had all of my money or my savings at the ANZ, but I found out that there was a different bank that was going to be able to give me a better return on investment, um, you know, if I went and put my savings with them, like let's say ING, then of course I'm going to take my money from that bank and I'm going to go and put it somewhere else where I'm going to get a better return from investment. Or a mortgage, you know, if I'm going to get a lower rate with one bank, I'm going to go and see if I can swap it over. And that was exactly what I did with my time. I went, right, I don't like it in this time bank anymore. I'm going to start putting it in other areas so that I start to feel like I'm being more fulfilled in my life and not working all the time and I'm starting to rest. And what did that mean in terms of my work? It meant that I had to get the shit done that was of priority to me in the hours that I was actually dedicating to that. I wasn't allowing myself to go, okay, well, I'm going to work until six or seven o'clock at night. And then after that, oh, it doesn't matter if it just blows out, like whatever, I just won't watch Married at First Sight or whatever you enjoy watching or My Kitchen Rules or whatever like that. I stuck to those boundaries 
unless something catastrophic needed to happen. But why? How did I do it? Because I always put things after it to make sure that I finished until I got in the habit myself. And this is something that I suggest to a lot of my clients um, in the past and currently to do. If you know that you are not able to stick to your boundaries, then find something to put right after it. So I had a couple, I had one specific client, I remember she had a partner, she was always working, the partner never saw her, their relationship was starting to get super strained. And I gave her that same task to do and she said, right, so I want to start dancing again because I love dancing and I want to do that for me or dancing if I'm going to be Australian and I want to and I need to have a date night with my partner or he's going to break up with me. So that's exactly what we did, right? So she would work from Monday through to Friday or whatever her, um, you know, her hours were, I can't specifically remember. But to make sure that she finished at the time that she said, she then planned something after so that then that way she knew she had to finish at that time because she can't bring up her boyfriend and say, I'm running late again because he would crack the shits. And it was serious, like it was on the verge of breaking up. Uh, and then after that, um, you know, for the dancing ones, like you just can't constantly be late to dancing all the time because that's an appointment that you've made. It's like you wouldn't be late to the dentist or the doctor. So you're not going to be late to dates with your partner or, um, you know, picking your kids up from school and stuff like that, right? So that's exactly what she did. She knew on the days that she was struggling to actually finish work, and if it happened to be every day, then she made sure that she put the gym after there, she made sure that she caught up with friends, she made sure she went dancing, she had date night. She started to implement all the things that she was missing out on straight after to force her to get her shit done in the hours that she had actually dedicated it. So I hope that makes sense and if it doesn't then please make sure that you go down below and you let me know about that because I'd like to be able to further clarify if it doesn't. But essentially what we've done here is we have gone and we've tracked our time. So just like a budget for money, we've tracked our time for a whole week so that we know how we're spending it and we know why we're feeling so exhausted and why we're going around and around and around in circles feeling like we're really busy but nothing is actually happening. And then what happens after that is that once we know how we spend our time, we're able to visually decide whether we're actually spending it efficiently or not, whether we're getting the best return on our investment. Because if we're not, we need to take it out of one time shop and we need to put it into another and we need to work out where our priorities are sitting. Because for me, and maybe you, if you are working ridiculous hours and you're getting stressed out when you don't see your family or you don't have time for your health or you're not eating properly or you're getting angry at your kids all the time because you just want to, you know, because you're stressed out and, you know, whatever. Like these are all things that we all need in life, right? Like there are three things like I believe we need. Business, relationships, which can come in friends and family, um, and our health. Like those to me are three massive trifectas, um, you know, in area, in, in areas. If we balance those, I honestly believe we're on an awesome path to, um, path to success. And that's based on my own experience. If I drop the ball in one area, God help the rest of them because it flows over. So... That's basically what we're doing, right? So then we rejuggle our time. And then if we know that we struggle to keep the boundaries and we want some accountability, we find a way to be able to hold ourselves accountable to that. So for me, I like having someone as a coach. Like I've got coaches in different areas of my life. So then that way I don't even have to think about it. I know that I need to send them information every day or every week and that holds me accountable. And then I've got friends and family that I make sure that I slot them into my time because I want to see them and that holds me accountable to making sure I see them. And then of course I go to the gym and then that holds me accountable to going to that too. So I make sure that I've got things in place because I need accountability. I know that as a person, I know that 99.9% .9 of the population is exactly the same and we all have accountability to make stuff happen, right? So what do I do after that? So for the times that I'm working, obviously this group is all about business. So from launch to legacy. So how do we start mastering the time in our business? Now I recognize I've only got five more minutes, so I'm gonna breeze through this super quick. So what do I do first and foremost? And any questions after this, then let me know. I'm happy to do more information on this. If you want more specific details around anything, I can do lives throughout the week or next week or whatever it may be. 
So what do I do after this? Well, hold on two seconds. Let me reach over here. So I'm sitting at my desk at the moment. And over here, this is my beautiful whiteboard. Now, you can't see all of the writing on there. But this essentially is what my spreadsheet looked like. So I'm a really visual person. So that is what the spreadsheet looks like when I have invested my time, right? So I have gone and I've tracked it and I've rejuggled it. And that whiteboard is what I update every single week depending on what I have on. So the hours that I sleep are fairly consistent. Now I know I need eight hours sleep. I try to get myself into bed by 10 o'clock every night. Um, you know, depending on kind of what's going on. But I have when my clients have got their calls on there, I've got when I need to go to the gym, I've got other personal appointments for myself, um, I've got when I go to yoga. Everything is on that gigantic whiteboard and it sits to the right of me. So if I'm sitting here going, right, what have I got on this week or next week? I look over and go, oh, I've got a call with that person or I've got this appointment coming up or I've got to go to the gym at this time because if I don't go to the gym at this time, the whole day is booked out and I'm not going to the gym at 11 o'clock at night. But that also holds me accountable to be able to see what it is that I've got every single day, right? So I update it every single week, which is awesome. Because that way I can look at it, again being visual, and it's like my online calendar, but it's in the form of something I can see when I'm always at my desk. Yes, I have an online calendar as well. And I know that might seem stupid that I've got a whiteboard with my time and an on, um, online calendar, but I can't carry around a whiteboard with me on my back all the time when people want to catch up with me and go, hang on, let me take my whiteboard off my back and have a look. That's why I have my online calendar to be able to lock things in because it syncs to my Google calendar or, you know, my um, actual email. And then that way I always can keep track of what I've got on, who, what, where, and I can juggle things around. They sync with each other. So very rarely, in fact, I think I've only ever been once double booked and there was some weird glitch going on. But then I come home and I put that on my whiteboard because it's super important to me if I need to have it on there that I do it. So I write another reminder to myself in my calendar, right, when you get home tonight, make sure you do that. Because I don't like thinking about stuff, right? Because it takes too much time and then there's procrastination procrastination involved and I just like to write it down and then I remember because it's like a list and I love lists and if you follow my business page or my Instagram page today it's all about how much I love to-do lists and if I could gift anyone anything in the world it would just be like a lifetime supply of post-it notes so that you can just constantly write things down and then keep those lists up and running. Now speaking of lists my last bit of advice here is that this is my to-do list. Sorry what I do every single night is I sit down and I write what it is that I have um, to do tomorrow. And I write it down and I estimate how long it's going to take me. So things like, right, I've got to go to the gym. It will say two hours return trip. Uh, I've got to do my Instagram post for the week. Let's say it's going to take an hour. I've got a coaching call with this person. That's an hour. I've got to plan this, like this live. That's an hour. Um, check in with another client. Message another client, right? So I go through and I actually specifically give myself a bit of a suggestion in terms of how long I think it's going to take me for every single item that I've got on those lists. So if I sit there and add that up and go, right, according to my list tomorrow, I've got 12 hours of work. Like that's unrealistic. So I need to prioritize what needs to happen and what I can leave until the next day because some of this stuff can actually remain till the next day and that's totally fine. And then I just do exactly the same thing that night. I get to the end of the day, I go, right, now what didn't get done? It goes on to my next day list. I put whatever else needs to happen. I estimate how much time that's going to take me. Again, if it takes me over however many um, hours I've allocated to work, then of course I need to prioritize. I put the number next to what has to happen. I make sure I get that done. There are no excuses. I don't make up a story to myself. I get that done because there is no time to be investing it into another day. 
like my bank only gives me so many hours to be able to work like my time bank so I have to make sure that I'm productive in the hours that I've got and then which you can't see I've also got some other lists of things that I need to also get done further down the track which I've obviously scheduled in like updating tutorials and stuff like that for my clients so it is seven o'clock because I like time I do have to get off um, I have a call with a client and also I said this would be half an hour um, so I guess, you know, any feedback anyone has around this half an hour segment on time boundaries and how to remove yourself from that burnout roundabout, um, and get yourself on the straight and narrow and feeling balanced and feeling sane, then please make sure, you know, any questions go down below, comment. I'm happy to do as many of these as possible. I'm happy to talk to you individually, whatever it is. As I said at the start of this, I come from a place of complete burnout where I physically did not have any energy to look after anyone. And I didn't have money sitting there to be able to invest in a holiday for pretty much 12 months while I gained the energy back from burning myself out. So if there's anything, and I say this to my clients all the time, if there is anything that I can gift my clients with, uh, it is to have a balanced life because I wholeheartedly believe with every fiber of my being that if you're wanting to start or grow a business, it does not get there um, until you have learned to invest your time in um, wise decisions to be able to help your business grow without constantly getting into overwhelm, without constantly stopping and starting, without the inconsistency um, and being able to use the time that you've got allocated to then take your business to the next level and your health and your relationships and money and everything else. So I hope that that has been, um, you know, super helpful. Um, again, you know, I'm super pumped for this year. I'm super pumped to be jumping in here, dropping a whole bunch of knowledge bombs, having um, knowledge bombs, having guests along the way. Um, I am going to jump off. Any questions, go down below, personal message me, whatever. Um, but have an absolutely awesome week. And if I don't talk to you guys again between now and then, I look forward to seeing you the first uh, week of April. And, um, and I will talk to you all soon. Much love. I'll talk to you later. Bye.